wears leg arms when you need him. So we decided the five and a half millimeter holes is not sufficient for these type of peas that we're doing. So we stopped by a cleaning uh, business in the area and they had these screens for sale. So these are slotted, what do they call them? They're, yeah, yeah, they're cross slots. Cross slot, cross slotted. And they're not metric, but they're a little bit larger. So we're gonna do a sample test here real quick. He's gonna dump some peas. This is right out of our bin. This is the stuff we're gonna be cleaning. And he's gonna shake a little bit and show kind of what the point of this cross slotted screen is gonna do. So this right here, that's a split. That's the point of that screen is to get rid of those. There's a shell. So we're gonna have a little bit of screenings, but yeah. And then there's those little rubber balls in there and that cleans out all the ones that are stuck like that, you see? The little balls bounce around and knock that stuff out. Cool, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these frames. These were the hemp frames. This is obviously not why I use this because we're not growing hemp. And we're gonna grind off all the rivets, get the basic frame like this, and then tack on the new screen on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and plasma cut this one. They're not quite a perfect fit, so we're gonna have to modify them a little bit. Okay, well, I think these will work. Um, I'm pretty sure to buy these things, it's uh, a lot of money. So, by using these frames and getting just the generic cross slat screens, money saved. making some phone calls around, happened to know a buddy who uh, has connections and said, hey, I've got one of them AGI Westfield loggers laying around. You can have it if you want, put it on your machine. I said, I guess. So this is a 16 foot, six inch Westfield auger. It's called a utility auger. They can make them in all shapes and sizes. I think they just range all over the place. But this is a six inch. It'll be plenty of capacity for this grain cleaner. Um, so let's put these pulleys together. Dad's working on putting the end together. And we will have to get a hopper for it. We do have to get a motor for it. But when it's said and done, we'll get that baby up above here. And then we can start planning on how this uh, sweet rotating arm here will attach to it to fill this thing when you're in uh, go mode. And when you're in transport mode, it'll fold back. So thanks AGI and uh, definitely it's a good color for this machine, don't you think?
Well, we've kind of moved this auger back and forth, up and down, all around, trying to kind of get an idea of where is it going to be? Where does it need to be? Because the things might change. The height of this might be different from the level of the ground. Maybe there's a concrete slab you're trying to slide that on top of, that a hopper's on top, and that's going to tilt the tip of this forward. All kinds of things we're just trying to figure out. So once we find the spot we want it, which I think we do, I'm gonna chop part of this arm off and then we're gonna build a bracket, and a little cradle that pivots. That'll attach here so it'll swivel and pivot. So I think we're pretty close to starting to mock it up. So let's do it. Okay, I have uh, half of a six inch uh, tubing cut for the cradle. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this on to the face right here. And then this chain with the bolt welded on it is gonna wrap around and uh, weld the chain on the back side so that it can cause compression when we tighten the chain up around the existing auger. Dad's over there working hard. I've just been sitting around eating chips. I'm really excited to see this go together. He's just finishing up this piece right here. Basically, he's building a little cradle here that'll hold this auger tight, build on that. And then we'll be able to move it around and really try it. But I'm really curious to see how much flexibility and movement we have. And then when we swing it all together for transport, what that'll be like. All right, well, we went over to uh, our Quonset, we call it a building, and uh, I remembered that this was in there. This was an old, old auger. I think it's a three inch uh, auger in about a almost four inch uh, tubing. And uh, they, uh, oh, this is probably, I'm saying dating this in the 50s. So we're just gonna throw some jumper cables on it real quick and just see if we can get this old motor to turn. We're not sure if it's six volt or 12 volt, but he's gonna find out real soon here if it runs. Well, while we were looking at upgrading the motor, it dawned on us that in that same building, there were these two things. And uh, neither has ran in a long time. I'm assuming they both work. This looks like a motor to drive, like a big fan of some kind. So anyways, we're gonna wire them in and see if we can get them to run. They're a little overkill for that little motor. Actually, they're way overkill, but they're also free 90 free. And we were looking at the price online to buy like a third horsepower motor to run this thing. It's about the same as one of those. And the size is much different. So just might as well throw one of them on. And actually, one of them almost would have been enough to run that auger, but 
we're gonna get a variable drive motor for that, so that's okay. But let's see if we get these things running. What happens? Sound like the starter whining. Ugh. It's kind of rusty, isn't it? Okay, first motor went turn. Let's try a second one. See if it. See if I wired this right. Oh. <laughs> well, that didn't work. I'm sure that breaker popped. Well, it definitely popped the breaker. I don't know. So this one makes buzzing sounds, it doesn't turn over. This one sparks a lot. It's been ages since these things have ran, so who knows? Maybe we'll have to buy a motor. Dad's still gonna mess with it though. We'll see, see what he comes up with. All right, so the only thing we don't have is the ground hooked up. The ground right now is grounded. Ground wire is actually attached to the motor itself, which is attached to this bench, which is grounded, I don't know where, somehow. But let's try it now. This is swapped. I swapped the two around. I think this is hopefully a fix. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, that's running. Sounds good. All right, package. Oh, hair blow dryer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is our cheap fan we bought. It's a 750 watt, 800 cubic feet per minute, 110 volt fan that was not very expensive, but supposedly works pretty decent for the little we'll use it. And so the idea was we'll just mount that baby on top of this part and let it pull whatever materials through it because it actually is, it is a dust fan and it's not going to wear the fan out with the amount of stuff going through it. It's just a trial and error. If it doesn't work, maybe we'll mount it on the ceiling and use it to suck the exhaust out of the shop when we're having vehicles running in here. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. It could be a complete failure or it could be a, hey, that works. So but, you want to plug it in? Yeah, we can see how much air kicks out of it. It's mostly about the equivalent of a good sized leaf blower. Okay, here you go. All right. Four, three, two, one. Well, one thing we're going to have to do is uh, break out this screen right here. The reason is, is this is going to get full of uh, feathers and twigs and all kinds of stuff, so straw. We want that material to go through the fan. And you know, okay, I know you could get one of those centrifugal uh, dust separators, the little cone that the dust swirls around and drops down. The problem why we don't want to do that is then we would have to have a containment for it because there's three openings in those units. So there's the suction coming in, say you went into one of the spiral centrifugal drums, well, then you got to have a container to collect the heavy material on the bottom, and then you got to have another opening where the fan attaches to for the clean air to go through the fan. Well, we don't want to do all that, so we're just going to let it go through the fan and shoot it out. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> what do you think of that? Is that gonna work? All right, I've uh, taken the pulley off. <clears throat> uh, it took a little bit of uh, work. That soft aluminum, uh, but that'll clean up well. It's not important. At least I never broke any of the arms. So then I wanted to get at the bearing because the bearing didn't feel bad, but it felt dry. And so I wanted to take it off. And you, a lot of times you can take a bearing, you can drill a hole, small, like an eighth or a less bit, and then put this little needle greaser in, and then you can give it some grease, and, and, and that'll extend the life of the bearing for a while. So I was gonna do the same thing with this one, but I thought oh, I'll just take it off because it's kind of hard to drill. Backside of the bearing, as you can see, there is no shield. And what they use is a washer to hold it, and I wanna see if I can get this off. <sighs> Now we have a great little auger to take the cleanings that are coming from the cleaner. And you know what? My wallet didn't go to the cleaners because I found this one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install this pulley. And what it has, it has a set screw in here with a screwdriver face that goes down and locks this onto the shaft. But 
really there's no flat spot no key way in this it's just whatever the pressure you put on this to stop you know make sure that it it doesn't turn freely on the shaft and wear but as you can see it's been turning you can see the grooves where that set screw has tried to bite in it and has turned so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this grinder and i'm going to flatten a spot right right here so that that set screw will set flat against that the screw is right there so we'll carefully flatten out a spot here okay that looks good enough so i've got a channel right here and i'm going to build a side mount with uh a uh, hinge here with the plate that bolts onto this and then on this other side I'll have a adjustment bolt so that you can put the belt on and then tighten the, the pulley up against the belt so that it won't slip. So one thing we were talking about is when we got this thing ready to go and we're rolling and it's under a truck and we go to move this auger or whatever what happens if say it's a slope or the wind's blowing or something and it just slowly you know drifts off of the hopper up there and starts running peas all over the ground well our idea to that is to put some type of pin system right here on this arm so you can latch it put a pin in in different positions depending on where your auger's at well i found this in our scrap pile and what will happen is there'll be little holes drilled all around in a perfect half circle or whatever arc and you'll be able to take the pin and pick which position you want this arm to be in and pin it and that way this can't drift back and forth while you're cleaning make sense let's make it All right, wanna see my handiwork? So this right here's your uh, pin, the pin it. I put a little nut on there just so that way you got something to grab on, kind of a little handle. And then I put a nut under here on these threads so that way it won't go up too far. Because before it was going up so far, I'd pull the bolt out of this. Now it won't drift very far. Yeah, parts, let's get to work. It's not for me. Oh. All right, so what we've got here is a 1.5 horsepower, three phase, 1725 RPM electric motor with a variable frequency drive. And you can increase and decrease the speed of the motor as needed. When we figure out how much capacity this machine can take, we can fine tune it with obviously the gate on the bin that you're dumping in, but you don't need this auger running 500 RPM all the time, just banging hard, beating up your peas, whatever it is. So you can actually take and turn down the speed, the RPMs of this auger to match the flow that's coming out of the hopper into the grain cleaner. Less wear and tear on your, your machine and uh, less abuse of your seed. And it didn't cost much more than just buying the motor in, right? So good deal.
Well, ran into some snags with the green cleaner. Um, we're working on it. I didn't get a film, but we were having issues with the three phase motor working with the VFD, the variable frequency drive to adjust the speed. Turns out our VFD is not up to snuff. So we might do something differently. But until then, next video is coming. So thanks for watching guys. God bless. We'll see you in the next one. And farm work is kicking off big time. There's a lot happening and it's just going to get crazy. And just so you guys know, we're planning on planting the most acres we've ever planted in Welker Farms history. So it's going to get crazy. Buckle up. Let's go. Later.